Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. And I do hope that you had a great trading week last week. Um, if you didn't, don't worry. It's OK. It's only one week out of, you know, 52. And... Um, you know, we can uh, always make that back as long as you're managing your risk and going for more than you risk. So um, again, if you are new, if you look in the description box below, you'll find all the currency pairs with chart analysis um, and links in the description box. And um, yeah, let's get into the fundamentals. So uh, for this week, so um, in the week ahead, we have the US publishing inflation, their inflation rate data, which is going to be very important, extremely important. Um, and uh, so the, pre the preliminary readings of the Michigan Consumer uh, Sentiment, retail sales, industrial production, durable goods orders, new home sales and producer prices. So a lot of uh, news for the US. But the main I think the main thing is really inflation rate. Um, because that really decides monetary policy from the Federal Reserve. Um, elsewhere, uh, important releases include UK monthly GDP. That's another, I'm going to be another important one. China industrial output and retail sales in Japan, Japan interest rate decision. Another important one they're probably expected to, uh, to hold. Um, but in case there are any shocks, then yeah, that will be, uh, that'll be a major move. Investors will also await the UK parliamentary vote on Brexit agreement. That's going to be another, um, probably a big announcement as well. I can't remember what date that is. Maybe on, on Tuesday, but that's going to be another big thing, um, and that will really drive probably sentiment um, with regards to the pound. Not necessarily fundamentals, but definitely sentiment. So um, with those fundamental and uh, sentiment um, uh, 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 releases this week, uh, we can now go to the price charts. And if you're unsure on fundamentals, then I have a fundamental analysis course that you can go to. Again, links in the description box below. And pretty much I break down what fundamental analysis is and the main, um, uh, I suppose, macroeconomic uh, data that you really need to um, look at and what Forex really is driven by. And I also have a fundamental analysis spreadsheet. Click on that link, it takes you to here and it will give you what my personal opinion is on, based on fundamental analysis, um, which direction I'm really trading. So I'm bullish on the dollar, neutral, slight bearish on the euro, which means I'm gonna be selling the euro dollar pair, et cetera, et cetera. Scroll across and you'll see my ratings, and ratings are just basically um, you know, varying degrees of you know what I think are strength and weakness. These are the sources, resources I should say, and um, sentiment analysis resource and when it was last updated which is today 9th of March so um, with that all out the way let's get into the analysis so Dow Jones dollar index right and this is a measure of really Dow Jones strength um, say Dow Jones dollar index strength um, and uh, against the major currencies so like the pound the yen and the euro and last week what we had was prices Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. We had prices come up into this area. I mean, I wasn't particularly convinced that this supply zone was gonna, you know, hold. Um, I'm a buyer of the dollar, so I was really waiting for, you know, if uh, any kind of demand zones. Um, and we don't trade the, the Dow Jones dollar index. We just look for confirming price action if we're trading any kind of uh, dollar trades. If we see some bullishness on this um, on this index then um, we know that we should have overall dollar strength on our dollar crosses. So what happened, um, this is what happened last week, Sunday, and in the five days since, we've just seen, you know, dollar strength, right, go through this uh, this supply zone and really up into another supply zone, which is here. And we can see the prices have reacted, probably gonna pause for now until the, um, the interest rate um, say interest rate, but the inflation decision um, this week, and also obviously with Brexit as well. But um, depending on the macroeconomic data, um, if we do get good inflation, a decent inflation, or above what we are right now, which is I think is one point six, then you're probably going to see you know the uh, the dollar index uh, increase in strength, which then means that um, the dollar pairs should also increase 
in strength and value. Um, so again, let's look at um, the chart right now on the Dow Jones dollar index. So we've come up into this zone here. All right, uh, I'm gonna probably get rid of that level there and that level there. Um, and when I say that level, I'm talking about the um, support and resistance zones <clears throat> no longer needed, no longer required. There is a bit of potential you know, resistance right here. If we go back, it's not necessarily the strongest, even though there was, last time it kind of held, was around this area here. Right, so you had a big rejection, bit of a rejection, then in between it's kind of held um, slightly, but then again, we've rejected off here again. So I'll keep it here for now. And then you've got um, a level just above that, and then you've probably got the, if we zoom out, you've got, um, you know, a high level, this whole supply zone right here. So the significance of that really is, is because we want to keep an eye on what other traders are trading. So not everyone trades um, supply and demand, other traders trade support and resistance. So if traders are entering new trades, not necessarily on the Dow Jones dollar index, but what well, they might be, but we're in the supply zone, and so you need the confluence of support and resistance traders also entering here, which should add to the supply equation. Not saying that it will go down, but um, that's pretty much what we look for. Um, if you're looking to be, so if you're looking to be a seller of the dollar, you're looking for some bearish price action on the Dow Jones dollar index before looking to get short. If you're looking to get long, then you're probably looking at this area here. All right, as an area, it's a demand zone to look to get long. You've also got I think, this area here of support and resistance. Here, uh, you've got maybe on the top end, probably something like that. All right, which again, you've got support, support, bit of support, resistance support here so if prices do come down to <clears throat> this area here and then start to put in some bullish price action look for bullishness on the pair that you want to trade and the same thing down here so again just depends on what we see this week with the uh the, the, the dollar um releases so now moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen <clears throat> this week, I'll say last week, we did have prices kind of um, break past this uh, demand zone. It was a previous supply zone. I and mean, I say it was waiting for prices to really kind of pull back into um, any kind of uh, demand zone where you have, again, support, horizontal and diagonal. Prices have pulled back into this demand zone, obviously broke through the uh, diagonal support but come down and really kind of held here so far this being a bit of resistance resistance support we know that demand areas are value right so we just need that confluence so with this being seen what do we see on the price charts as far as new supply and demand well nothing really i wouldn't say anything really i maybe want to put something here but with regards to any trade setups, you go down into the lower time frame, um, you know, whatever time frame you do trade, and then maybe look for some sort of buy trade at the moment. If not, then here's going to be really the next level that you're looking for for buying the US dollar. If you're looking to sell the US dollar, we do have some supply in this area right here. And it's your supply zone now is that the strongest area of supplier is that profit taking um potentially i think it's just profit taking we don't know for sure i'm gonna get rid of this horizontal um diagonal support trend line um but we don't know for sure whether this is um you know just profit taking or if this is an actual reversal so i think this week what you'd be looking for if you think that the japanese yen is going to increase in strength 
right? And the dollar is going to get weaker. And let's say we push up this week before the um, the inflation uh, release, and then the inflation release comes out worse, way worse than expected. Then you're probably looking at a sell trade if prices have come up into this supply zone before the fact. If um, obviously you know the prices don't do anything like that and they continue to go lower, then you'll be looking for a pullback into any kind of created supply zones. Um, so for now, it's pretty much I would say just a wait and see approach on the uh, on the dollar. Right. We also have potential Japanese uh, dollar, um, Japanese yen strength and this is due to risk off sentiment you know with the uh, trade wars going on China's economic slowdown potentially um, Brexit as well so money could be flowing into the risk off safe haven currencies like the yen and the Swiss franc um, but I think that's about it for supply and demand zones on this currency pair so now looking at next currency pair which is dollar swiss dollar swiss this week we had prices again bounce off of this demand zone here and then continue to make their way higher so we took out this supply zone here obviously dollar strength coinciding with um the us dow jones index strength that you saw this week as well so let's go back to the charts so we can delete this and I'm not going to delete this level for now what I am going to do though is put on another demand zone because we do have demand that's taken out some supply All right so it's made new pretty much new highs so this is going to be one of the strongest areas of demand <clears throat> and really the next area at the moment that I'll be looking to potentially buy from. So if you are looking to get short at the moment, this is a brilliant area to probably look to establish some short positions ahead of what is uh, going on this week. So if you believe that the Swiss franc is going to gain in strength all right, and gain in value against the US dollar, then now really is the time to look for short trades on a lower time frame <clears throat> if you're waiting for you know long trades then you'd be waiting for a pullback into the top end of this demand zone or this area here this 0 0.993 area so around parity which is the one um uh area right here you can see you've got support support resistance on top of this demand zone right here so um those are pretty much your areas really for this week and again depending on what happens with you know um fundamentally you've also got a bit of a uh trend line confluence potentially within that zone right there so again depending on what happens you've also got some extra confluence going on in this area for your buy trade. Now looking at the dollar CAD and dollar CAD last week <clears throat> we had this big um, you know bullish candle and this was really due to the Canadian dollar I think the GDP coming out um, you know way below expected and uh, obviously the dollar being the uh, dominant currency only one thing really was going to happen now um, from a supply zone perspective obviously uh, there was no really value for the Canadian dollar at this price level or at this price level you know and prices pretty much you know went straight through so looking at a price chart we can delete this area now <clears throat> excuse me let's get rid of this and this we can get rid of that level there as well so what we have at the moment is strong demand now we have 
really no supply at the moment or there is obviously supply here but it's not a strong area of supply at all we don't know what's going to happen this week if prices are going to continue to go higher or lower so we now we're in a situation where we have to kind of wait for prices to create either strong supply right or if prices are going to continue to go higher then this creates a nice demand zone for us to get long um, and again if we don't get any any uh, any demand or, um, within this area then we'd have to wait for prices to really come back down all the way down into this demand zone before looking at, uh, at buy trades or there's another option let me just uh, go back to to this and what you would be looking for is something like this where you see maybe some supply and then you see break higher and then you're going to see prices come back into this demand zone before looking at longs so that's how really demand is created um, and these are the options that I do you know look for on this on this currency pair so again if you're looking for probably a sell trade now definitely isn't the right time in my opinion this would be the area would be yeah the uh, the best area because you can see that we have definitely strong supply in this area so again if you're buying or if you're buying a Canadian dollar you have to believe that the Canadian dollar is going to increase in strength or the US dollar is definitely going to um, you know get a lot weaker right is this a bargain area for the Canadian dollar so this chart hasn't really changed much and we have to wait for prices to really kind of create and confirm what it is that we need to uh, we need to see so moving on now to the New Zealand dollar US dollar so last week we had you know prices come down into this demand zone and I was saying that if you know, this is really the uh, the area here This would be the area, um, this 0 0.678 to 0 0.675 area you'd be looking for potentially, you know, some sort of reversal if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar against the, um, the US dollar. As we can see, prices did manage to, you know, uh, put in a bullish candle. Now, is this a reversal? Who knows? Um, again, you have to do your fundamental analysis and understand um, why the New Zealand dollar is going to get stronger or the US dollar is going to potentially get weaker now we could see obviously some weakness from the inflation reports and other macroeconomic data from the US dollar which would then you know confirm probably prices going to the upside so let's look at any new um, any new demand zones what I'm going to do is because it's actually touched and pierced this bottom demand zone just to clear up the chart a bit I'll delete that um, I'll also delete this as well so um, you can see we've touched the bottom of that demand zone right and now we're into you know potential reversal territory if it comes to buying the uh, the New Zealand dollar you do have a supply zone right here as well as you made lower lows and a lower high so if you are looking to get short here we go supply zone if you are looking to get short potentially on news then this is going to be the area and again just zoom down into you know a lower time frame if you want to go down to you know my trading time frame is the four hour so you'd be looking for any kind of uh, you know sell trades and try to trade it down you know to the low depending on your risk reward again if you're looking to buy this is going to be your next buy zone around this uh, 0 0.671 area but just keep in mind that you have touched this area once twice already three times is a uh, lower probability type trade but you do have this area um, of horizontal um, support as I say diagonal support but you also had it touched you know created once twice and it's probably going to be the third time as well so um, from a technical perspective this isn't necessarily the, 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 the greatest area you know prices have touched several times here 
we always want to be uh, buyers of fresh areas of supply and demand right and zones so this would be for example the fresh area this would be the first touch of this supply zone is what I would call a fresh area because we haven't touched it before so this would be probably a sell trade if you were looking at getting short but compared to you know this demand zone which isn't really that fresh um, doesn't mean that it won't work out but if I am looking to buy this currency pair then it'd probably be down into this zone right here this would be more of a fresher area of demand as it hasn't been touched so again if prices do pierce through here you'd be looking at see we've touched this area once twice this would be the third time I'd probably be looking for any kind of area above these touches so somewhere like there around this 0 0.693 level and above so moving on to the pound dollar now the pound dollar we've sold off a little bit so last week there was you know the area to look to potentially look, um, look for short trades and if anyone did now I'm actually in this trade from up here um, you know pretty much we're just uh, looking to uh, hold the trade down to really you know probably demand zones or even further depending on what happens with the British vote um, and also uh, British GDP and uh, obviously dollar data so this week you can see prices you know have really sold off down into this demand zone so if you are looking at the new chart we're probably looking at and I'm gonna get rid of this one is potentially a buy in the British pound and it'd be pretty it would really be based on on sentiment and again it could be based on GDP I don't really expect British uh, UK GDP to um, to really excel as far as uh, be you know spectacular simply because of it leading up to brexit what businesses are investing in you know Britain and the UK um, in lead up to brexit you know you'd be you wouldn't be that wouldn't be necessarily the smartest play you know you've seen um uh, uh companies uh look to i think it's like uh, i think car manufacturers i think maybe something like i think it was nissan or honda or something like that where we're talking about they're not you know building new plants in the uk I'm not saying it was because of brexit but you know basically they're not doing it and a lot of uh other companies have decided to hold fire on um, investing in the UK because of the uncertainty so I really don't expect the uh, British GDP to come out you know any kind of spectacular numbers in fact I probably expect it to get worse now um, will that happen we don't know um, my expectations are my expectations but I'm not trying to necessarily predict um, you know what is going to happen but just my expectations is is that so but if we do get a shock um, uh, um, GDP and we get, you know, the, basically the vote and the deal, you know, Theresa May's deal passes Parliament, then you could get some, you know, uh, bullish price action with the British pound um, to the upside. If you're looking to, you know, get short, then you'd be looking at, um, again, a move up into this supply zone here before looking to get short. Or you'd be looking for prices to probably come up into this area again we've touched this zone probably once twice already so anything below here isn't necessarily the greatest i'd probably look for again anything a bit higher than or around this area here this 1.331 1 area and higher before looking to potentially get short um and again if you're looking to buy the pound then this level doesn't hold then this would be your next level to look for buy trades um, moving on to the euro dollar In the euro dollar this week um, we've pretty much had a bit of a I wouldn't say collapse and use strong language but prices have you know come down and uh, now we're getting we're bouncing really off of this lower demand zone and again just to prove the point that the more times a level of demand or a level of supply is touched uh, the weaker it becomes you know you touch once twice three times if you want to quit a third time but it definitely touched the second time 
right? And then we've kind of broke through. Again, this is uh, um, Euro sentiment isn't isn't great at the moment. They're not doing too well. Germany slowing down. Italy in recession, uh, which is probably being you know kept out of the paper at the moment. The papers. So let's go to the euro dollar. All right. So this level. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete this demand zone. And that is that a supply zone? No. Nope. So I've got to delete this here. All right. So this demand zone here is from long term, uh, where you've had you know support, support, resistance, support, support, and then demand. You know the last demand uh, bearish candle before prices make a new high is right there. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this demand zone down to here, and then I'm going to add another one right here. All this area really is an area of, of, of past demand, but this is from May 2017. So um, how strong this is, uh, is, is anybody's guess, but we are bouncing off that and there will be traders looking at that level anyway. From a value perspective, <clears throat> now we could have, again, due to uh, dollar weakness this could be a great place to buy so you're really buying um, you know at a bargain area potentially for the euro if the uh, the dollar uh, does disappoint this week so you've got plenty of um, space to the upside to really get um, if you haven't got in already uh, to get some pips so uh, the next supply zone to really probably take it to would be right there if you are looking to you know buy on a uh, on a lower time frame you'd probably be looking at a bit of a pullback before you know looking at um, any kind of long trades if you are looking to sell which I am I'd be looking for price to come all the way back up to here or for and let's uh, something like this this is what I'd be looking for looking for a move up then a move down then a move back up into what would be known as you know supply or you could look for a basic move just got that goes straight down and then back up into this area of supply so that's what I'd be looking for this week if I'm looking to buy the dollar right so either up here or if a new area of supply is created again if you're looking for any kind of demand and buying the euro then now's pretty much the time to look for some entries now we have the euro yen and the euro yen this week we did and I did keep this on here I did say I was going to keep this uh, level of supply on here as it hadn't broken and you can see you know that we did have bit of a sell-off and now this is some strong supply in this area here you can zoom in a little bit yeah so there's a reason why I kept this on now you can see the reaction here and we've taken out some uh, some demand so let's go to the charts now what we have is we can delete that demand as there was a no demand there so the yen has gained in strength due to probably some risk sentiment. Let's move this over. There is some risk sentiment going on in the market. And I want to move this supply zone here. So potentially we could have buying opportunity if you're looking to buy the euro. But remember, we could potentially be entering into a risk-off environment. So risk-off meaning the yen strengthens. If the yen is strengthening, you don't really want to be buying, uh, you know, the, the euro. Also, um, you know, with, again, the uncertainties around Brexit, the, is the euro really a buy? So um, what you need to do is probably, if you're looking to buy the Japanese yen, is wait for some sort of pullback into a supply zone, right? before looking to get short 
if you are looking again to buy the euro these are really your areas do we have anything within that um, that large demand zone we do I think probably something like this probably that something like that where you have support 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 bit of support if you zoom in in this area bit of support and resistance here here and then here again so this 1.22 level would be the next area if prices do fail here in order to look for some long positions now moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and again what we had last week all right was a bit of buying and then the dollar US dollar increased in strength and then we now have um, you know a bit of uh, um, I suppose demand for the Australian dollar let's go to the charts let's have a look so we can delete this demand zone and again if you're now a buyer of the you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar probably now is is going to be you know a decent time to look for some buy trades but keep in mind that you have an area of supply right there and again you have to believe that the Australian dollar is going to get stronger than the US dollar or the US dollar is definitely going to get weaker at some point and this may be again the uh, the week that you can anticipate the dollar getting weaker if we don't have um, you know inflation you know expectations it doesn't it goes it's, it's below the uh, 1.6 uh, reading so you could see prices move to the upside on this currency pair if not and price continue to move down then these are really your areas within this wider demand zone if you are looking to sell again your first area to look for short trades is going to be here if not it's going to be somewhere around these areas of supply and finally we're looking at the Australian dollar Japanese yen and the Aussie yen is a really a, a measure of uh, risk sentiment the yen being risk off if the yen is, is is strengthening then we have risk off if the Australian dollar is strengthening then we have usually risk on so this week we've seen you know a bit of a sell-off um, not really anything drastic to be fair um, it's kind of drifted down into this demand zone and so we're in a bit of a range between this high and this low so here's where the range is probably started from All right. and we have what is known as a bargain level for the dollar and the bargain level supplies a bargain level potential bargain level for the Japanese yen and we've price has really been contained between the 79.84 level and really down to this demand zone which is 77.81 now what is going to push prices either out of here or beyond here um, again it's probably risk off or risk on sentiment um, coming into the market this week right, or into the next coming weeks um, if you are looking to buy the Australian dollar you know now is an opportunity but just look to the left and see how many times that levels touch so I'd probably be looking to buy into this lower area this fresher area not that fresh to be fair but it's the seven, 77.2 level is uh, hasn't been touched so that would be the area I'd be looking to look for any kind of buying trades with risk on for a risk off sentiment we're looking at prices you know coming up to here but again this area has been touched once twice already a few times so um, you really have to have risk off sentiment if prices do come up into this area before looking at 
you know a sell trade because at some point this is this is this prices will you know go into price discovery you, you have to wait for a, a fundamental or a sentiment trigger so with that being said brings us to the end of this week's analysis um i really do hope that you've enjoyed it if you do have any questions please email me at info at trading180.com and um hope you have a great trading week don't forget to like subscribe and share um uh, with other fellow colleagues it really helps and i hope you have a great trading week take care